Okay, this has been on the back burner for a little while, but I've finally gotten a chance to start to get into this. This is a, I believe, 17-inch, yeah, 17BZP4. This is an RCA portable black and white television from about, what, 1958? I think it's the KCS-119 chassis, I'll correct that. And, uh... It's had a problem that I looked into briefly on another video. This is the chassis here, the underside, and this chassis has a problem. The problem is, and someone's been in here, um, before I get into the problem, see the, the high voltage cage has been lifted, the screws are loose, uh, the damper showed short on a tube test, but that I do have another damper for. and. Uh, the 250 volt power supply, the B+, plus, that fuse there will open. It was open when I got it, and when I put a replacement in, of course, it draws excessive current. So the sweep section of this is drawing excessive current. Um, just got out of school on this, we'll say, as another one was just done recently. You may or uh, may not be aware online. And um, that's really good stuff. So. This should take no time. I don't know what method I'm going to take here. First, I'm going to get the diagram because my SAMS does not show the placement of parts. I want to find the B-plus boost cap on the damper. Uh, I want to check some of these capacitors here. but um, And basically, I want to ring the flyback and the yoke because I uh, came across a new toy the other day is, the, is a flyback ringer. I've never used but I'd like to give that a shot but I don't have any diagrams of, of, of component placement so I'm going to try to find another SAMS for this set. Some things to be aware of on this chassis while you're working on it I believe that could be the vertical output transformer there and this is the horizontal horizontal oscillator coil whatever you want to call it, it is a little loose it's it's in a bad area where if you rock this chassis you could lean on it. It may have already been done that, but it's okay. Um, and it is, I stand corrected, the KCS-118A. So let's see what we can do to get started. And right now I'll just place a yoke on it. I'll test the yoke. I may put the original yoke here. I don't need a CRT. I'm just going to plug it in and we're going to try and watch the current as uh, we don't need the CRT uh, connected to test this to see how, if we get high voltage. I'm hoping to get high voltage, so I don't need the rest of the set for that. I can run it on the bench, even without a tube, to see how, uh, how we can accomplish high voltage. Once I get high voltage, then I'll either hook a test tube up to it or whatnot and see what we get once we get the vertical running. I'm going to do the same principles, explain um, as others do. So, um, let's see. Let me think about this and we'll be back. Okay, I found the missing diagram thanks to our folks over there at earlytelevision.org. Uh, I have the placement parts that's missing from my copy of the SAMS. And uh, the two caps that are in question as far as the B plus boost goes are these two right here. I'm going to say C66 and C65. Right here and right here. Also, this 0.047 C18 is going to be. Uh, we're going to want to check that. There are some bumblebees and and whatnot in this too on the other side of the chassis. I'll show you later. But I'm going to just. I'm just getting some preliminary started here. Okay, jumping back a little, I'll show you the front of the set. What you do, everything pulls out the front. You undo the screws, two on the side, two on the bottom. You take the front off and then there's a CRT bezel with eight screws and you pull the CRT and the yoke out the front and the chassis lifts up out of the back. And of course after removing the knobs, the knobs are the first things we take off. Just for uh, reference here, this is a 17 OP034. drawing 195 watts and there's our CRT yoke assembly which I'm going to try to ring this 
We'll see what's going on here. CRT tests very good. Okay, I've outfitted the set with a new damper, 6AX4, because the original tested short. I've gone ahead and added a 10 ohm resistor for the uh, fusible resistor here with a 1 amp fuse in series with my meter DC set to current. I have the, um, it was nice to see this in another video. I have this uh, cathode current meter in line with the 6DQ6. I also, from a donor chassis here, the KCS 121. A few videos ago, um, it was a TV that someone used as a prop, so they they cut the chassis out and kept the cut the tuner and kept the knobs. I've got the 6DQ6 from that, which I did not install. It does have some hours on it, but uh, I've got the original output in there at the moment. Uh, the yoke is similar enough. I'll, I'll reattach the plug here, and we'll uh, we'll plug it in. It is a little tired here. The, trim rings and whatnot um, but we're going to use the yoke we're going to measure it I'll measure it I'll meter it and then I'm going to use this yoke no CRT uh, I pulled the audio output tube but then I put it back or the vertical output tube 6AQ5 I'm going to plug this in and, and just see where we're at I got the wiring I was having a little trouble with the horizontal uh, color codes and that's because this is a replacement yoke 110 degree DY 26A. Okay, the last two remaining wires have the same color code. One is the the bottom of the horizontal, and one is uh, you know the capacitors in the middle. I'm simply going to go by matching up which one was cut where. Uh, that one seems to match the black in the middle, and this one seems to match. It, it it's it's really difficult, but um. I'm going to take a guess at it that that one is there and that one is there. I'll meter it. Okay, of the two wires here, it's strange, but this one changes to blue when you get closer to the yoke. And then it turns to this same color wire, but up at the yoke it is blue. And I read 17 ohms here, which is about half a 35 on the blue. Although it goes through the two capacitors. The blue should read... No, see, yeah, I'm only getting half of the winding here on the horizontal. So, okay, I'm going with blue there. And although it says pin 1 on the yoke, the yoke seeing this is a different yoke, I'm not sure that goes to pin 1. That goes to pin 3 on this. It's a little confusing. I don't know if that other one just gives the blue appearance, because the other one has some kind of coating on it up towards the end but I'm gonna go with between pin 4 and 8 here which is right there between pin 4 and 8 I get my 35 ohms well 33 who's counting so uh, and then if I go between uh, let's say pin um, pin 5 and 4 pin 5 and 4 I should get about half that Okay, in between 5 and 4, I get 17. Well, between 8 and 5, I also get 17 ohms. Between 8 and 5, so that's the whole bottom of the horizontal coil, and... Oh, yeah, no, that's the bottom, okay, so that's good. Okay, one last check. We don't need the CRT. Our yoke is attached, hopefully correctly. That's right here. We have our fused uh, sweep circuit, fused 10 ohm there. We're on current DC, and we'll get cathode current over here. And, oh, such a mess here. And I'd love to be able to hear high voltage still, but I'll put the high voltage meter probe on the second anode, which I had it there, but it won't stay. Okay, and we're ready for testing here. We'll fire it up. Okay, we'll apply some power here and there. Okay, we'll apply some power here. Power's on. 
our current. Let's turn this on and see what happens. We have tube glowage, anybody? I have nothing. Oh, we do have tube glowage. I have no current here. The speaker's attached. I hear and see nothing. Something just snapped and it started coming to life here. Something snapped and it just came to life. Alright, a little over 100 milliamps. Look at 12,000 volts of high voltage. Sounds like snow. There was a damper the whole time. Let's put a signal to it. Okay, I'm feeding a signal into this. I hope I have the wiring right on my test tube here. The 8YP4. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to fire it up and see if we get a picture. I do have a signal attached. I don't know what channel I'm on. We'll go around the die. We'll see what happens, okay? So, double checked everything. I think I'm good. Power's on, of course. Sound. Tubes lighting. It's amazing, I see nothing on that current meter. And I don't see my tubes lighting. Yes, I do. If our CRT is lit, okay, we got that right at least. I don't hear anything in the speaker. I don't see any cathode current yet. I don't know why I don't see any current on this meter. And it's hooked up. And then it clicks and it comes on. That's the strangest thing. I might be upside down, backwards here. I gotta find out what that clicking is all about. I don't know where the controls are on this. Let's see if we can get to channel three. There's a maybe brightness. I don't know where anything is on this TV. Vertical. Where's the vertical? Let me check this out a minute. Okay, let me try the, the horizontal here. No, it doesn't like the current. Let's go this way. No. We're rolling in our horizontal is off. If I turn it in, see the current goes, it doesn't like that. Let's see what we got where here. Okay, the good news is we have the picture tube hooked up right, but I can't seem to get the horizontal to come in. This is contrast here. Contrast volume. And we have brightness. Vertical hold is the top one. This time it comes right on. Uh, horizontal's off frequency. I'm going to attribute that to the wrong yoke. I'll try to lock in the picture though. Something is snapping. Vertical hold does nothing. I 
Mike Balboni at 36. Bye bye Balboni. That would be one part of that great 85 championship. This is game. brightness. Okay, so brightness. I'm gonna try this on the original CRT perhaps. Okay. I can't get the uh I can't get the horizontal in. Oh stop. There's something going on here. I better check it out, but I think I'm going to put it on the uh, original CRT. This is a start, though. Okay. Now there's our current 150 milliamps, which is good. I can't get this to stop rolling. It just the vertical hold. Well, it, it does vary somewhat. Yeah. And the horizontal again. It's right where the speaker is. It doesn't like me adjusting the horizontal. See, as I start to get in, the current goes. It goes wonkers. Just doesn't like that. Okay, it's way, it's way off. Horizontal's way off frequency. I don't want to keep turning this. Oh, and then it starts doing this. That stuff. Rolling. And he'd like nothing more than to not be asked when are you going to win. The horizontal is off frequency. Let's stop here. Okay, that's enough. No updates. 150 milliamps. Mm, a little over 100 there. 10, 20, 30. 10, 120 milliamps. It's kind of high, but it's not running right either. Okay, stop here for now. Okay, back on the RCA. Um, I've got it turned over to this side. And I have the original yoke in, but there's still no difference. I was able to tune it in, but we have a problem. We don't have horizontal or vertical sync, so we have no... Show you. We have no sync. No sync. Vertical hold doesn't do anything. Barely does anything. I'm wondering if this has tin whiskers in it or not. If you look at these these controls, these are those ones famous for tin whiskers. Um, We'll take some measurements. Uh, sink separator tube is down here. All right, do a little more testing here. Tin whiskers, voltages, and uh, check it out. 